Today we're working on Word Module 5 and Module Project 1 College of the Midwest. I've already downloaded my instructions, my starter file, and my support file from Cengage. First thing we need to do is to save it. So I'm going to go to File and Save As. And I'm just going to put mine on my desktop. The best thing you need to remember is to make sure that you save it somewhere where you can remember what it is. And this one in the parentheses means this is a copy because I've already downloaded this once to my machine. I'm just going to get rid of all those ones and put a 2. And I'm going to save. Uh, mine says replace existing file. Again, I've already done this once. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and replace it because I'm going to do it over and resubmit it. See what happens. So now I have my document done and I'm ready to go into my instructions. So the very first one, um, step one, they want us to change the theme fonts to Kandara to use a more modern set of fonts. We're using a template and the template already has set up for us and all we need to do is just make a, add our own information to the template. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, sorry about that, that's my phone. Um, sometimes it's easier just to start over when you're dealing with a template instead of trying to uh, fix it or redo it. But with this case, we are going to make some changes to this template, the first one being the theme fonts. So if I come up here to the design tab, here are all of the different themes, and each theme has a different font set assigned to it, but we can change that. We can change the color schemes, and we can also change the font schemes, the thought font themes. And in this case, it wants us to change it to Kandara to go to a more modern look. So we're going to come down here to the Kandara font theme, and it's going to automatically change all of our text and stuff in our document to Kandara. We have a hyperlink here um, on our fourth line, this HTTP www LinkedIn, um, and it wants us to change that. It wants us to change what text is displayed. So I'm just going to highlight this. There's different ways you can go about doing this, but I'm going to highlight it and then come up here to the Insert tab and go to uh, Insert Link. and. That's not what I wanted to do. Why didn't it work? I'm going to right click on it. Let's do it this way. Right click on it and come down here to edit hyperlink. And the text we want to display is just the LinkedIn Cengage uh, dot com backslash Kayla Lang. Uh, that's what we want the text to display. And we also want a screen tip. So I'm going to click on screen tip. This is what's going to show up on the screen when we hover our mouse over it. And we want this to say LinkedIn page for Kayla Lang. Make sure you spell everything correctly. That you use proper, uh, the correct capitalization. Otherwise it might count you wrong and it'll say, hey, you didn't do this. Uh, for example, it's not lined in page, it's LinkedIn page. Let me see if I spelled that right. L I N, I'm just going to start over with LinkedIn. Can't spell LinkedIn. Okay, then okay. So we just change how it looks in our document. The next thing is we want to replace this email address, this text, with a hyperlink. So I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to hit delete and add a hyperlink. And the text I want to, to display is klang at mail.cengage.net. And the address I want it to go to is the same. So I can just highlight this, copy, paste, okay. 
And so now we've got our email address in here as well. Here in our doc name, our uh, top of our document, we have where it says enter your name. Anytime you're using a template, if it says enter your name or enter email address or something, um, you need to just do that. Don't just leave it blank. So we want to change this into your name and we want to put in Kayla's name, Kayla Lang. And we don't need a date on this, so we just need to delete this. So I just hit backspace twice to delete it to get rid of that. <laughs> Number six, we want to create a paragraph style that we can use over and over in our document. Um, so to do this, we want it based on the business management and finance coursework paragraph. So we're going to just put our mouse, our insertion point right down here in the business management and finance coursework sign line. On our home tab, we're going to come over here to the styles and click on this more button. And we want to create a style. And this style's name is going to be list head. L-I-S-T capital H-E-A-D and we're going to say OK and we want to apply this new list head style to our special projects paragraph. So I'm going to move my insertion point down here to special projects come up here now you can see I have a list head style click on that and so now they all match we have some continuity in, in our document on number seven, we want to move the table row containing experience text so that it appears before the search terms. Now, you probably didn't realize that this was even a table, okay? And that's one thing uh, that makes it kind of fun with um, documents. Uh, one way you can find out what you're dealing with when you're looking with templates is to turn on your formatting marks. And to do that, we're going to come up here to our little backwards P, the show hide button, and it shows our formatting marks. And one way that I know right off that this is a table is these little markings right here, these little square with a circle inside. Those are end of cell marks, and those only appear in tables. So we're dealing with a table here. Another way you know you're dealing with a table is when you click down inside it, you have table tools that you can choose from to do your work with. So even if you don't turn the table formatting lines off, you can, uh, if I turn that off, if I'm down here, I have table design and layout. So you know you're dealing with a table. So here we want this experience cell information to be above our search terms. So I'm just going to highlight all of it. Then I'm just going to click and drag it, and it's going to move my rows around. There's more than one way to do that. That's by far the easiest. All right, number eight. We want to change the bullet in the experience section to a right pointing chevron from the bullet library. So we don't want this to be a bullet. We want it to be something a little more uh, a little more pizzazz for it to stand out more in our document. So up here, we're going to come up here and here to our bulleted list and click on this little down arrow. And we're going to define the new bullet. The one we're looking for is a symbol. There's lots of symbols we can choose from. We want to go to the Wingdings library. These are alphabetical. We want the Wingdings and we want the Chevron right facing or wingdings number 216. So you could actually just type 216 in here uh, and the wingdings. OK. And then OK. And now we have updated our arrow, our bullet point. OK, number nine. We want to insert a comments document property building block in the blank table cell to the right of search terms. So right over here, we're going to just click in this cell and we want to insert a building block. Now remember, building blocks are things that you can put into your documents that you can use over and over. Uh, just kind of helps you um, don't have to type so much. You don't have to 
spend as much time with something once you get it set up. Set up. So we're going to go to Insert, and over here in Quick Parts, um, we have uh, this document property. This is what we're looking at, and we want the building. We want the text stored in the comments document. So we're going to come over here to the comments and enter. Oh, not enter. Hmm, let me see. I think I did that right. Now I'm kind of losing it. Let me undo, undo that. Ah, there it was. So we've got our quick parts, document property, and we want comments. Okay. So now we're going to open up the file, the support file that we downloaded. So I'm going to go back here. Got my support file. I want this information here. I'm going to copy it. Come back to my assignment and we want to put this in the blank paragraph at the end of the resume. So we want this to be right down here. And if you go back to your home tab and turn on your show hide marks, then you can see this is the blank paragraph. And we want to paste it. Uh, and we want to keep the source formatting. So we have our comment at the bottom. And now we want to set our margins. So we're going to go to the Layout tab, go to Margins, and we want a 0.75 at the top and a 0.75 at the bottom. And we want to center our document vertically. So if we come over here to the Layout section on our Page Setup tab, here's where our page alignment is, vertical alignment, and we want the vertical alignment set to Center. Say so, okay. And you can compare your document to the document in the till. I can see right here this is supposed to be italicized. Somehow I don't think that copied right, but let's see. I'm going to go ahead and save my document and close it. Go back to Mind Tap, continue. I'm going to upload that document and then check the grade report. And I got 100 out of 100. Okay. Uh, so that is how you do the Module 5 into Module Project 1.